trudge from office to office. See me in a week out here. Nothing for you right now. We got too many already. Too many of you. You don't even have one of me. <laughs> I beg, I plead, can I just watch rehearsals? <laughs> Finally, the theater guild, very prestigious theater of the day, cast me as a spear carrier. Yes, I'm moving up in the world. <laughs> but one day, I'm alone practicing backstage. I hear this voice behind me. You're not holding that spear as if it just crossed the ocean with the greatest general in the world. I turn and find this rather short and tense looking young man standing there. He's got an egg shaped head of curly hair. The face looks like he just walked out of an El Greco painting. Here, I'll show you. So he takes out his spear, assumes this fierce pose, gives it back to me, and walks away. I'm thinking, who the heck does this guy think he is? I'm also thinking what he just did made a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't run into him again until we're auditioning for a musical. You didn't know I could sing, did you? Well, I can't. <laughs> oh, okay, the stage manager. Now, the guy with the chutzpah, he's casting the show, of course. He can sing. Now he introduces himself, Lee Strasberg. And it's during rehearsals we ended up particularly because he's even more passionate about the theater than I am. When he starts talking about acting, I never realized there was so much to know, but I tell him, I'm not interested in techniques. What matters more to me in a play being well done is what's being done. It must relate to society. It must relate to what's going on. It must relate to us. He fires back, acting's an art. And today the actor is lost. He has no idea what he's doing. Not only he has no idea, he has no idea what an idea is. He goes on to the man says, truth on stage. We're not seeing it today. This is how you talk to me. You say play should have great meaning. Of course! A play has the power to change life. That only happens if all the actors are trained as an ensemble using the Stanislavski system. <laughs> life on stage. And that's how we went on for weeks, for months. I talked about literature in the theater. Well, by now I played a couple of small parts in some of the shows. I also become a play reader. I also catch the ear of my assistant stage manager. Now, her name was Cheryl Crawford. Ah, I see her head's bobbing up and down. Well, I tell her all about my talks, Miss Strasburg. She gets excited. But you know what she tells me? You can't expect a theater guild to change the way they do business. That's just it, I said. That is not a business. It's an art. Look how they throw all those actors together in the last show. Edward G. Robinson, Morris Karnowski, Alfred Lunt, a better cast you couldn't have dreamed of. Still, it was deader than a doornail. Of course, it still goes on today. Whenever these big time producers get a beer in their bonnet, they've got to do a classic. They immediately throw as many big names together. That way, we'll think what they're doing is important. Who cares if we see 16 different <laughs> styles of acting? Oh, you know, this is funny. This reminds me of the time when Teresa Helfer, now she was the head of the theater guild, she meets Stanislavski at performance of The Seagull. Now he had come over the entire Moscow Art Theater actors, they're performing their greatest hits on Broadway. The Cherry Orchard, Seagull, played by Gorky. She goes backstage, she says, oh, Mr. Stanislavski, do you think it's possible to achieve the same result with a group of American actors? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly. Oh, and how long do you think you'd have to rehearse? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> <laughs> Two years? But that's out of a question. Ah, oh, babe, in that case, Two weeks. It's time. For what? to make our own theater. For a second, I think there's something wrong with my hearing It's such a ridiculous idea. To begin with, we had no play, no money, no actors, no prospects. But the more I think about it, it makes complete sense. And that's how the group theater was born. <laughs> now, why am I telling you this? Because today is the age of amnesia. <laughs> the day I'm ready for it, I forget what happened the day before yesterday. I told this to Clifford Odets once, and he stuck in his play Paradise Lost. I said, we cancel our experience. Well, now I do something I never did before. I talk out loud. Yeah, yeah, try it sometime. You'll find exactly what you think. <laughs> <laughs> For 25 weeks, every Friday night at 11.59 in my hotel room, I would talk. And actors come listen to me after they finished their performances. I don't know what I was going to say. I mean, there was nobody. I was a playwright at the theater guild. 
So uh, that first night I'm sitting there, and uh, Strasbourg and Cheryl, they get up first to speak. They talk about what they do, the kind of theater we're planning to have. And I'm looking at the faces of all these actors. I'm wondering what made them come, come here tonight. What's going on inside their heads? Maybe they're too excited to go to sleep because they just finished a performance. Or maybe they thought we were serving food. <laughs> or maybe, like me, they think something's missing in the American theater. They want to find out what it is. So when I get up, I have the slightest idea what I'm going to say. Maybe you're here because you say, I have to act. I want to act. Why? To make money. Well, you can't. There's a depression. Suppose you want to act for fame. Your ego needs that. Give up acting if you don't become a big star. Suppose you want to show off. Well, that's not a bad thing either. It's part of human nature. And if we could all act as easily as we have the desire, we wouldn't discuss anything else. But the times make it necessary for us to question why we want to act. How we can get ourselves to the point where we're committed to act. You want to act today. You've got to be a fighter. You've got to learn how to duck and weave and function to your fullest potential. That's why you must have consciousness. But now you're saying, oh, I don't need somebody to tell me who I am. Oh, I know who I am. I listen to myself. Ah, but do you? Today, we're faced with oppression, poverty, disease. And we don't even see it because we're scared to reach out. We're too scared to make contact. We're too scared we're going to have to do something. And that frightens us. So we've become a nation of sleepwalkers. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell me, how could this have happened in a country like this? A country of dreamers, of pioneers who crossed this land and covered wagons to carve on a new frontier. A country of such intense passion that when I look at all the energies flying around, even I'm impressed. <laughs> but where's your passion? And yours, and yours, and yours to fight for who you are as artists when you're faced with what masquerades, the theater in this country. No. It's not enough to throw our most talented actors together in a classic play and say, bing, bang, boom, create great art. It's not. And you know it, and she knows it, and he knows it, and here, and here, and here. It's a fact. We don't have a theater today. And, and don't look at me like I'm committing sacrilege. It's the truth. <laughs> but now you're saying, oh, but Mr. Clement, you can't say these terrible things about a wonderful theater of 1930. Look at all the shows on Broadway. There's over 300 of them, and all the stars. There's Catherine Cornell, London Fontaine, Helen Hayes. That's all it is. Just one big show. From top to bottom, from inside to outside, from here to there, show after show, cooked up, thrown together, without the least little bit of concern, whether it mean anything other than being a money-making proposition. But I believe in a theater. It'll mean something to the actors who are acting in it. It'll mean something to the society in which it's being performed. A theater that'll lead us to discover who we are, why we do what we do, why we want what we want, the truth about what's going on. So we walk out of the theater. We're more alive than we've ever felt in our entire lives.